second half of the 1980s, a new stage in the development of Ukrainian contemporary art began. The change was catalyzed by Perestroika, the Chernobyl disaster, the disintegration of the USSR and the establishment of the Ukrainian state, the decline of the Soviet utopia and the slow but steady dismantling of the familiar order of things led by many to believe that they were living in the end times. This feeling was reinforced by the Chernobyl disaster in 1986. For artists, this meant a fascination with previously forbidden trends and practices. They wanted to transcend the old dichotomies of official and unofficial official art, typical of the Soviet era, and settled the scores with the socialism realism. They were also aware that the urgent need to catch up with Western art history, theory and methodology to overcome the isolation of the Ukrainian artistic process from the international movement. The point of departure for this new era was the now legendary painting The Wars of Cleopatra by Arsen Savadov and Georgi Senchenko. A post-modern situation of the Spanish Baroque portrait of Prince Balthazar Charles by Diego Velázquez, Savarov and Senchenko's canvas was also not to the socialist realist tradition of depicting strong female characters as muscular peasants and workers, heroes of labor and war. Contrary to the usual powerful dynamism of any equestrian scene with its aggression and implied superiority, the tiger's rider here is bizarrely static, devoid of emotion. Shown in the 1987 All-Union Youth Exhibition in Moscow, it became a sensation throughout the USSR. The painting was sold at the 1987 FISC Fair in Paris to a private collector and was never exhibited again in Ukraine, lending a near-mystical status of this piece. At the next All Union Youth Exhibition held in Moscow in 1988, Ukrainian art was presented in a separate gallery. The Ukrainian section appeared as a stylistically coherent phenomenon of gigantic expressive paintings abundant with illusions. Among the artists were Alech Holosy, Alexander Hnelitsky, Valeria Trubina, Alexander Voidbord, Pavlo Karaste, Dmitro Kavsan, and others. As is typical of art development in states emerging from colonialism, the first definition of this art originated from the former metropole. After the 1988 show, Moscow art critics responded with an outpouring of Western terms neo-expressionism, transvanguard, and neo-baroque. Initially, the most popular title was Ukrainian transvanguard. It indicated a connection with contemporary trends, although Ukrainian artists' familiarity with the ideas of an Italian art historian and curator Akil Bonita Oliva was rather superficial, although quite inventive. Ukrainian artists usually did not see original works by trans-avant-garde artists, but rather interpreted Oliva's text in their paintings, which they found in Soviet publications. Since 2000s, we have been calling this phenomenon a more correct term, the Ukrainian New Wave, by analogy with the global movement. In such conditions of institutional decay brought about by the impending collapse of the state, the late Soviet-era artists created their own alternative establishments, including art squads where they settled without permission. The most famous in Kyiv was the squad on Paris Commune Street, renamed Mikhailovska in the early 1990s, which functioned from 1990 to 1994. The paintings created by the members of the Paris Commune squatting group were notably for their excess in size, painterly vigor, expression, overload of meaning and speed of execution. The star of Paris Commune, Alec Holosy, was one of its most prophetic painters. He filled his canvases with impulsively painted hallucinatory stories that often had mystical undertones, as in his famous canvas Yellow Room. Valeria Trubina worked in a similar vein, endowing her canvases with an eerie atmosphere of enigmatic rituals combined with a cartoonish feel like her king fish.
Alexander Hnilitsky, polemicizing with the Moscow conceptualists, created that the helmet is squeezing, as if to draw a line under the Soviet era with its pathos of heroism. The new wave expressionistic style spread beyond Kyiv. Pavlo Kerstey from Uzhgorod and Andrei Sahaidakovsky from Lviv are two notable examples. Sahaidakovsky combined neo-expressionism with art brood, priming old dirty rags instead of canvases and covering them with macabre figures, hardly intelligible inscriptions and scaring ornaments. Odessa formed its own circle of new wave artists, closely connected to Kiev. It included Alexander Voidbord, Vasily Rabchenko and others. In the early 1990s, exhibition life was actively developing here, and milestone exhibitions were taking place. They were often conceived and curated by the leaders of Odessa postmodernism, the artist Alexander Voidbord and the art critic Mihailo Rashkovetsky. In his paintings, Roitbord tended to use sophisticated, metaphorical subjects, such as in his work Contamination of Rituals. However, the artistic life of Odessa was not limited to new painting trends. Together with the conceptualists led by Leonid Wojtsehov, representatives of the new wave organized ironic actions in the public space. Serhiy Anufriev, Martin Chiki, Perzi, and Wojtsehu himself often employed the medium of painting in their conceptualist practices. The fruitful combination of the new wave's neo expressionism with conceptualism was vivid in the art of a group with the ornate title of the Resolute Age of National Post Eclecticism. Founded by Lech Tistol and Konstantin Reunov in 1987, the group's program and methods crystallized after the encounter with late Moscow conceptualism and the Moscow art squad of Fermin Lane. Reflecting on their difference from the metropolitan artists, they appointed themselves as ambassadors of Ukraine in Moscow and became preoccupied with the task of creating national symbols for a state that had yet to gain its statehood. In their large-scale and expressive paintings, they used the language of pop and sots art, Western advertisements and Soviet propaganda. For example, Tistal's painting Reunion is a fictional account of the Periaslov Agreement of 1654, which brought the Ukrainian state under Russian control and a take on a popular Soviet historical cliché. The painting depicts monumental embracing figures engulfed in a multi-layered riotous painterly matter that erases the borders between figures and surroundings. This way, Resolute Age narrated Ukraine through the plurality of symbols that could represent it, including not only the fragmented particles of Ukraine's distant past but also the ideological and pop culture debris quickly accumulating on the ruins of a not yet fully disintegrated Soviet Union. Some perestroika artists gravitated towards abstraction. In Kyiv, they were united by Tiberi Silva Shi. In the group Paintery Preserve, they set out to protect painting as such while recognizing the need to suture the gaps with the inventions of the Ukrainian modernism violently suppressed in the 1930s. The core members of the group – Tiberi Silvashi, Anatoly Krivolab, Marko Geiko, Mykola Krivenko and Alexander Rivatkov – sought to rescue painting using its own means, purging it from the dictates of text and ideology. Despite their programs being similar, the artists look for inspiration in different areas. Christian spirituality and mysticism were central for Zhivotkov, while Silvashi focused on the transcendent energy of color and Krivolab turned into the mythology of the Ukrainian landscape. This last theme was important to the entire group, which often foraged the Ukrainian countryside 
in search of pure pictorial sensations while contemplating the effects of the Chernobyl catastrophe's invisible nuclear contamination. It seems quite natural that major exhibitions in Lviv during this period of transition took place in venues ranging from the former Lenin Museum to a cathedral. The defloration exhibition displayed in the Museum of the Communist Leader, which had been redesigned as Social Political Culture Center shortly before the exhibition's opening, was based on the traditions of conceptual art that were developing in Lviv. Platon Silvestrov, together with Sahai Dakovsky, Alexander Zamkovsky and Ihor Zhuliev, engaged with and subverted the ideological content of the museum in an act of symbolic declaration. The exhibition featured a coffin with live carp fish and icons made of domino tokens interspersed with portraits of Lenin and Karl Marx adorned with stencil halos. The invitation to a discussion exhibition organized by a famous conceptualist Yuri Sokolov a few years earlier opened in Lviv's Maria Znizhna church instead. The church became a gathering place for a huge number of works by artists of different generations, including those of the underground. And it also hosted quite provocative happenings and performances given its location. The Mazoch Fund, a conceptual art collective with a penchant for transgression, was founded in Lviv in 1991 by theater director Roman Viktuk, artist and filmmaker Ihor Podolchak, and artist Ihor Durich. Building on the legacy of the Lviv born Leopold von Zacher Mazoch, author of the erotic novella Venice in First, the group offered divine and alluring content in contrast to the bleak post-Soviet reality. They held a number of provocative auctions, including sending Podolchak's etchings into space, art in space, and staging a performance called Mausoleum for the President in the stairs of the National Art Museum of Ukraine, using political context to discuss the limits and possibilities of contemporary art. Bewilderment over the loss of a certain tangible reality with the disintegration of the Soviet project was manifested in the works of Kharkiv artist Pavlo Makov. His long-term engagement with the ideas of an impossible future and elusive present was translated into his project Utopia Chronicles. Its title in its first and last letters clearly refer to the name of the new country – Utopia, Ukraine or UA in its international postal form. Despite the constant repetition of certain crucial bits such as poplar trees, tiny barrack buildings, targets and soldiers, each intaglio by Makov is unique as reality is wounded and marked by personal experience. In his project, Makov interprets utopia as a desire for a place that only culture can define and make real. However, Kharkiv is primarily known for the phenomenon of the Kharkiv School of Photography. A prominent member of this circle was Boris Mikhailov, who nearly documented the absurdity, existential despair and disintegration of the Soviet regime with a particular focus on the edges of existence, marginalized groups and alternative lifeways. In the early 1990s, together with Sergei Bratkov and Sergei Solonsky, he created the Fast Reaction Group, which blurred the line between performance and photography and in a very postmodern spirit questioned the relevance of photography as a testimony and a document. In the early 1990s, new media performance and more conceptual approaches began to dominate Ukrainian visual art. Vasil Sagolov, one of the members of the Paris Commune, imitated blockbuster production in his photo series World Without Ideas, turning an old empty aquarium into a filming stage where toy cars, helicopters, the images of people cut out of magazine illustrations, absurdly combined with pieces of raw meat, were arranged as if for a thrilling crime drama. Zagolov insisted on the materiality of cinematic cliches according to his new theory of solid television. 
Based on the allegory of Plato's cave and Jean Baudillard's notion of simulacrum, Sagolov postulated that the world is hyperreal, like a hallucination, and that the only significant materiality exists in media projections. This vibrant and dynamic period of Ukrainian contemporary art came to an end in 1993, with the death of Holosy, the so-called Mozart of the Paris Commune squad, and the opening of the Source Center for Contemporary Art in Kyiv, founded by the businessman and philanthropist George Soros. Later, SCCA opened in Odessa. Contemporary art in Ukraine has gained an influential institution. Martha Kuzma, the first director of the Kyiv SCCA Ukrainian American curator, brought together artists in the famous art happening Alchemical Surrender in 1994. The event, which took place on board of the Ukrainian warship Slavutich in Sevastopol, was attended by artists from different Ukrainian cities Arsen Savadov and Georgi Senchenko, Oleg Tistol and Mykola Matsenko. Yachichkan, Oleksandr Hnilitsky, Andriy Sahayakovsky, and the Fast Reaction Group. They used the space of the worship to the maximum extent possible for their own actions, objects, and video works, and also involved the sailors of the ship. Alchemical Surrender documented a sustained fascination with art media beyond early prevalent painting, thus switching to exploration of video art performance and installation in Ukrainian art of the 1990s.